Hello, and welcome to our sixth annual ADHD symposium. This annual event is made possible thanks to an ongoing partnership between CHKD and the Chesapeake Bay Academy. We are pleased to be able to offer this resource, to, resource on ADHD to our community of parents, educators, and clinicians, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Dr. Sarah Shagnon, and in this session, I will be covering uh, medication administration and transition to summertime. Uh, let's get started. Uh, so I was asked to speak specifically about medication administration in our patients with ADHD. I want to start by saying I will be referring in this talk in particular to stimulant medications. Um, in general, um, medication administration and the use of medication for children with ADHD should be reviewed consistently. Children's needs change developmentally over time, um, and their bodies change developmentally over time and rapidly. So uh, your healthcare team and your healthcare provider should be regularly reviewing uh, how your child is doing on their medications, if it continues to be the appropriate dosing, et cetera. A good time to do that is always the summertime because the needs and the environments are going to change really dramatically from the academic school year to summertime. Um, so we want to assure uh, at, at every regular appointment that the benefit of medication continues to outweigh any risks or side effects. Um, and those measurements may change during the summertime. The benefits may change, the risks may change. Um, again, I'm referring here to stimulant medication. And the reason is because stimulant medications are specific prescription medications that can be used in a really um, specific manner where they can be stopped uh, immediately. Um, they don't need to be titrated on or off. Uh, other medications, non-stimulants such as Intuniv, or guanfacine, clonidine, uh, medications in that class do need to be titrated. And if you have questions about those medications, discuss that with your healthcare provider. Um, so when I think about using stimulants in children with ADHD, there's really uh, three presentations or three reasons that we're using stimulant medications. The first is for the child that's inattentive, easily distracted, or disorganized. The second is for the child that is hyperactive and impulsive. And of course, the third are, is the child that is the combination of these two. Um, and I am going to try to pull up my share my screen to show you the slide that I'm referring to here. Uh, and this helps me guide my uh, recommendations in terms of medication management because it's important whenever you're considering a prescription medication to understand what our goals are. All right, so um, as you can see here, uh, I have listed the DSM-5 criteria of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And the reason I think this is really helpful to look at is um, as we talk about type one is the inattentive type, here we're talking about the kids that have difficulty um, paying attention to details, making careless mistakes, difficulty sustaining attention, et cetera, um, losing things, poor organizational skills, easily distracted. Type two is your hyperactive and impulsive type. Those are the kids that leave their seat frequently, they're constantly moving, talking excessively, impulsively blurting things out, um, or impulsively acting in ways that might be unsafe. And so you can imagine, um, the reason that I think that's important to share and to consider, you can imagine that those would have uh, different changes to environmentally during the summertime. So again, when we're thinking about our goals of medication administration, um, we want to evaluate the risks and benefits for each child. For example, for a child who uses medications mostly for inattention, if they're no longer in school, they may not need any sort of medication at all. If they're really using it only to keep sustained attention for specific core requirements, uh, they may not need medication at all. If they're if they are using it because they have difficulty with organizing their thoughts, they're easily distracted and they're going to be engaging, for example, in sports, you may want to consider that during either that during a sports activity that might be a limited period of time during an academic camp or during a tutoring sessions or therapy sessions when you really need that child to be able to sustain their focus and attention to get the most out of those interventions and therapies and activities maybe we can use a shorter acting dose, um, maybe a smaller dose. You can make some, again, adjustments depending on that. Um, the other thing 
to consider are, of course, the risks with stimulants. And most of the time, what we talk about with risks of stimulants really is the nutritional needs. Um, a lot of time with stimulants, children do not eat or they don't eat well enough to sustain themselves nutritionally. And those are the kids that I will often recommend have a medication vacation, either on the weekends or in the summertime to help with their nutritional status. Again, weighing the risks and the benefits. What is your child doing during the summer? And what are the risks of going off of medication or adjusting medication versus the benefits? For a child who uses the medication more for the impulsivity and the hyperactivity, well, that doesn't change as much during the summertime usually. Um, now, it may be the case that that impulsivity and hyperactivity really affects the school environment and it distracts other kids in class. The teachers can't handle that child um, or have, I shouldn't say, the teachers have difficulty um, managing the classroom with that child. And, um, and so you're using the stimulant really to assist with um, classroom management. But a lot of times those kids that are very hyperactive and impulsive from a safety standpoint, that's still gonna be the case in the summertime. But maybe your child um, can be a little bit more hyperactive in the summertime. They don't have to be in any one particular room and they can run around outside and you can um, take them to the park and they can run around for five hours and get all their energy out and, and you can manage that and that's fine. Again, that's a situation where you may wanna consider maybe the benefit is not as strong in the summertime as it is in the academic year. You can adjust the dose. You can adjust to a shorter acting versus the longer acting duration, or we can just take a medication holiday altogether. Of course, the combination children, the children that deal with both of these above, um, you know, I guess the what is really the goal of medication for that child? What is their benefit? Is that going to be a continued benefit depending on what activities are going to happen in the summer? Um, Again, not just academically and not just for tutoring, but considering things like sports, um, considering things some, some kids are involved in extracurricular activities that require a lot of attention and sustained attention, and they're just going to feel better about themselves, and they're going to feel better about their ability to participate in those activities if they have their medication on board. So again, I think the important thing here to realize is that there's lots of options here. Um, we want to individualize the treatment of ADHD to each individual child. If you hear nothing else during this ADHD symposium, that's really key. Every child is a different child. Every child's needs are different. And one size fits all medicine doesn't work for our children with special needs. So we want to consistently and creatively adjust what their treatment is to what their needs are that are going to be changing over time. So consistently working with your healthcare provider and making sure you're revisiting these questions and these concerns on a regular basis, most notably during big transitions, such as around summertime, that's gonna be the key to overall success, to maintaining that success over time and to helping your child really grow and develop to the best of their ability so that they can be proud of what they're doing with themselves. And thank you again for attending this year's uh, ADHD, annual ADHD symposium made possible by CHKD and the Chesapeake Bay Academy. For uh, further recommendations, further information, and further resources, uh, please visit cba-va.org slash ADHD uh, and chkd.org for further resources, um, as well as additional medical providers. Uh, and please feel free to reach out if you have any further concerns.